pray? Yes. Good morning. We bring you greetings from the Peace Baptist Church down here in Pike Road, Alabama, where God has blessed us to be in existence for 122 years. We're grateful to God that we have gathered in this place this Sunday morning and we pray that God is pleased with our effort as we try our best to continue to send out the word, uh, not only to our members, but to those who may come in contact with this uh, this, this video uh, via Facebook or YouTube. Uh, let us pray. Father God, we come this morning. We thank you, Lord, for life, health, and strength. We thank you for being our God and our Father. We thank you, Lord, for being in charge. But Lord, we know as long as you are in charge, Lord, you can and will make everything all right. We ask you now, Lord, that you continue to touch not only this church, but all those who have been affected by this pandemic. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to be, to give us the wisdom, the knowledge, and the know-how to, to, to handle our everyday routines, that we may follow the rules and the guidelines set forth, Lord, that we may make it through better than when we were when we came when we started in this situation. But now, Lord, it's preaching time. And we ask you now, Lord, that you give us the power to preach. We ask you now, Lord, that you will hide me behind the cross of people who see nothing but all of you. We ask you now, Lord, that you give people the ear to hear what you have to say. And in the midst of this exchange, Lord, we ask you now, Lord, that you allow us to lift you up. For you said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw all men unto me. In Jesus' mighty name, we say this prayer. Amen. Amen. Our morning word will come from the, the gospel according to Mark. The Gospel according to Mark, chapter number four. And we're going to begin reading at verse number 35. That is Mark, chapter number four, beginning reading with verse number 35. And it reads, And the same day when evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when he had sent away the multitude, they took him as he was in the ship. And there were also with them other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And it was, in, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carry thou not that we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And when he had said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? This morning, message, I want to take a beautiful topic. It's a closer look at storms. A closer look at storms. Brother and sister Samir Rogers said the other day as he was giving his report that here in Alabama we have entered the severe storm season. The severe storm season. And I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that as we uh, entering into this season uh, as far as weather as relates to storms spiritually we deal with storms as well there are spiritual storms that happen in our lives that are designed uh, to, to either get us closer to God or designed to get you away from God and it and depends upon how you react to your storm it will determine the nature of your storm Satan sits back believe it or not and he tries to send storms our way to discourage us he sends storms our way to get us unmotivated to get us uh, upset with God and want us to turn our back on God. And you have to be mindful and careful that the devil is doing everything he can to get somebody to go with him to hell. Because that's his spot. That is his plan. He, he don't want to go to hell by himself, so he wants to do everything he can to, 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 to get us away from God. So it is, my brothers and sisters, that we endure storms. And no matter where you are, no matter what you do, you're going to have storms that show up in your life. I want to show you in our text today uh, the, the, the importance about that. Because as we read our text, it says, and it's the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. Jesus is talking to his disciples out here and teaching them all day about parables and trying to give them the wisdom and the knowledge that they need to, for, for this side of glory. Because my brother and sister hear me, you're going to need some wisdom from God in order for you to make it on this side of glory. This side of glory is, is full of pain, suffering, and bewilderment and problems. So you're going to need some wisdom from God to deal with the storms and the pains on this side of glory. So he's talking to his disciples. Now, and as he's finished with the parable, he says to them, let us go over to the other side. Let us go over to the other side. And the text reason, when they were sent away the multitude, they took him as he was in the ship. And there were also with them other little ships. And there, and there arose a great storm. I want you all to catch that human. Here it is Jesus has given his disciples directions on what to do and how uh, and how and how to get there. He said, let's go to the other side. They're on the boat. They're going on the other side. They get in the boat, and as they go, watch this, a storm shows up. 
which suggests to me, watch this, that you can be doing what Jesus tells you to do. Which means you can be obedient and you can be on the course that he put you on and a storm will show up. Say it again. You can be with Jesus. He can be in your presence. You can be doing what he's telling you to do. You can be obedient and watch this, a storm will show up. Just doing what God tells you to do will cause you a storm. But my brothers and sisters, I want you to catch some of the some of the text that Mark gives us hint of because uh, this gospel is found, this, this story is found in the other two gospels, Matthew and Luke. And, and the other two texts let us know that there were, he was talking to a disciple, but Mark indicates, watch this, see me, that there were other ships there. Other ships when Jesus was talking to the disciples. But then there were others in other little ships who followed Jesus and the disciples, and they got caught up in the storm too. Now watch this, hear me, hear me good. Y'all hear me, hear me good. Now Jesus is talking to a disciple. He's telling the disciples what to do. But because the people decided to follow Jesus, that sounds like a good idea. It is a good idea to follow Jesus. Jesus, they, they decided to follow Jesus. Now they are caught up in the same storms as the disciples is. They're caught up in that same storm. And they're there not because it's ordained by God, but because they followed, watch this, they, they, they followed their own mind. They did what they wanted to do. They didn't have permission to go. And now they're caught up in the storm. And sometimes, hear me, my brothers and sisters, sometimes you get caught up in storms that really not designed for you. You just die because you, watch this, you followed your own mind. You did what you wanted to do. And so it is, here you are in a storm that's meant for somebody else. And so you got to be careful who you link up with. You got to be careful that when you do something like this, that you have permission of God to link up with that person or be with that person. Because watch it, watch it, because you can get caught up in a storm by association. My brother says, you're going to have enough storms in your life. You ain't got to go to somebody else's storm, too. Amen, somebody. You, 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 go, you have your own storms on your own. You don't have to have some, get caught up in somebody else's So it is because they, they follow the disciples, even though they didn't have a mission, they got caught up in the storm. And so it is. That lets us know that everybody's going to have storms. Whether you with God or not, you're going to have some storms. But I want you to watch this storm. As they continued to go, Jesus fell asleep. Jesus was on the boat with them, and they allowed Jesus on the boat to fall asleep. The storm came. Jesus is asleep. And my brothers and sisters, hear me good. Sometimes in our lives, we have storms because, watch this, although we whip Jesus, we've allowed him to go to sleep in our lives. Hmm. We've allowed him to go to sleep in our lives. We've allowed Jesus to fall asleep in our lives. And when you say, well, brother, how can I be with him and he fall asleep? That's like, watch this, hear me good. You can come to church, but if you come to church with the wrong attitude, you were in the right place, but because your attitude bad, you've allowed Jesus to fall asleep in your life. You can pay your tithe, but if your heart ain't right, you see it right since you can have Jesus. You can be with him, but allow him to fall asleep. Are you living your life according to how God wants you to live? Are you loving and treating people the way you want, the way God wants you to treat them? Are you living your life to the standard that God wants you to live? If you are not, you might be on the side of since you've allowed him to fall asleep in your life. And the storm rose. The storm came because they got they got that with Jesus, but they allowed Jesus to go to sleep with, uh, to go to sleep on the boat. And my brothers and sisters in your life, sometimes God allows storm to come because we've allowed Jesus to fall asleep in our lives. Now I want y'all to catch something. Catch watch this, watch this. The storm got bad. And on, 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 on this boat, you have some professional fishermen who knew about storms on the sea. And for Jesus' disciples were fishermen, and so it was. Here they're, they're there on this boat. They're, they're going through. This ain't their first storm, but there's something different about this storm. There's something unique about this storm to the point that when it got so bad, the, 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 the waves were beating against the sea. The water was filling the boat. They went and woke up Jesus. They went and woke up Jesus. They went and woke up Jesus because the storm had gotten so bad. Some storms are designed for you to go get in contact with Jesus and wake him up. Some storms are designed for you to get back in touch with the master because you lost your connection. And so he allows storms to show up here and give me good so that you can wake him up. So you can wake him up so that he can become a part, an active part of what you're going through. And my brother says, hey, man, if you want to go through a storm, it's best to go through a storm with Jesus than without him. And so it is. So the storm was designed, it got so bad they had to go wake up. They had to go wake up Jesus. And I want y'all to catch that how it happened. Catch this, and I'm, I'm going to finish this morning. Watch this, watch this. The storm didn't wake Jesus up. The Bible says, hear me, the Bible says that while, the, while they were going through and the water was entering the boat, Jesus was still asleep. Jesus was able to sleep through the storm. But he got up, watch this, when they got in contact with him and, he, and, they, and he heard the cries of his boys. When he heard the cries of his people, Jesus got up and did something to the body. 
Jesus got up and did something about it. Some form of desire for you to call on Jesus. Some form of desire to call on Jesus and hear me good. And it's not the storm that woke him up. And lets me know that Jesus found peace in the midst of a storm. Jesus was able to sleep through the things that they were panicking about. Jesus slept through the storm and, and they had to go wake him up. They had to go wake him up. They had to go wake him up because Jesus was still sleeping. Y'all know about y'all, but I love, I love a guy like that who can sleep through my trials and tribulations, who can sleep through the storm, which means that he's not caught off guard. He's not rattled. You can't shake him. No storm is too big that he can't handle. It. He, he's to the point where although this storm was massive to man, it was, it was, it was able, Jesus was able to sleep comfortably through it. That means that he has power over storms. He proves that when he get up, he looks at what's going on, and he says, peace, be still. He tells the storm, to be still. And so it is, my brothers and sisters. Hear me. This morning, as we go through this storm, as we go through what we're going through, this unexpected storm that hit not only this our church, but every church around the world that has hit the streets, not only our streets, but the streets around the world, know that watch this, he has the power and the know-how to get us through the storm. Now watch this as I finish this morning. This this thing started with the word. Jesus told the disciples, let us go to the other side. That was the word. And they, they started out on their journey. But then as they're doing what Jesus has called them to do, they needed some more words to get through what they were going through. I'm, all I'm trying to tell you is, my brothers and sisters, as we go through this, all we need is the word of God. The word of God started them on their way, and the word of God brought them through their storm. And I'm going to tell you, as long as you got the word of God in your life, you got access to the word of God, you can make it through storms. Storm. There's no storm too big that the word of God can bring you out of. He says to the storm, peace, be still. And he looks at the disciples and says, where is your faith? Why are you so fearful? Where is your faith? Have faith in the word of God. Because the word of God will stand through it all. Have faith in the word of God. Because the word of God will stand through it all. And he promised us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He promised that he never sleeps nor slumbers. He's promised that he got all power in his hands. He has the power to do all things but fail. And because he loves us, because he, he, he has some passion for us, he's not going to leave us even in times like these. That's the truth about this storm. It's just a storm. And the thing about storms, they come and they go. And this storm has come, and eventually this storm is going to go, but you got to be ready for the next one. And how we get ready for the next one is in the word of God. So my brothers and sisters, I pray as we go through this, that you take the word of God with you, apply it to your life. And if you're living your life today and you don't have it and don't know him in the parties of your sins, I offer Christ to you right now. There's power in his word. And if you're walking there and you don't have him in, in, in your life, all you have to do is say this simple prayer. Father, I am a sinner. But I truly believe that you love me. You love me enough that you sent your only begotten son down through 42 generations to die on the hill of our cavity. I believe that he died, but I also believe that one Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands. And with all power in his hands, he has the power to save a wretch even like me. So I invite him into my life. I invite him to be my savior. I invite him to be my strength and my God. And my brothers and sisters, if you believe that with your, with your whole heart, tell him amen, tell him you love him, and I promise you, as of right now, you are saved. You are saved. Again, we thank you for these few moments uh, spending here with us here at the Peace Baptist Church. We pray that this word uh, will help you through what you're going through. Our prayer is that God continues to bless you and keep us at end times like this until we meet again. And God bless you and keep you. Thank you very much.